Thank you, Nichelle. Thank you for the introduction, a very long one. Uh, but uh, um, I also want to thank Gagan and the Transport Events team for inviting me. Um, and they asked me uh, to share my opinion on what are the dynamics that we're seeing in the port space that are impacting m and activity. Um, so um, just a couple of words on Alvarez and Marcel. Um, we are a turnaround and restructuring and mergers and acquisitions uh, advisory house. We um, have a global operating model. Um, we blend um, people that have managed organizations in our key verticals with management consulting horsepower. Uh, and we bring a mindset of pragmatism uh, and getting things done. Um, I'm going to um, uh, go quickly through my slides because a lot of the key messages that I wanted to share were already covered by the keynote speaker. So thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. Um, I'm in agreement that, uh, listen, the um, optimism that we had uh, a month ago that things were going to um, move quickly uh, out of the uh, crisis and that we were going to return to uh, more calmer waters, I think that has now disappeared. Uh, there's a, a much more realistic uh, understanding that uh, the, uh, the crisis will be with us for some time now, that we will be struggling uh, with um, uh, depressed trade, with high levels of unemployment, with uh, financing not being as available as we would have liked it. Um, and clearly in that kind of environment, um, the, the way that we approach value, the way that we approach sustainable growth needs to change. Uh, but also uh, this new reality is driving um, a number of interesting dynamics that um, that uh, from an M&A standpoint should be looked at as opportunities. Um, the first dynamic that we see is um, pre-crisis, we saw a lot of activity in our space. Um, some of it uh, really accretive, um, uh, some of it uh, underpinning the strategy of the acquirers, uh, unlocking uh, capacity, delivering uh, geographical diversity, but also uh, significantly looking to secure new skills, specific infrastructure and technologies. And, and I think that uh, we need to recognize that there was also a set of deals that didn't deliver on their promise, that were not as structured as well as they should have been, um, and that ultimately ended up not supporting the, the strategy of the acquirer. And with the crisis impacting on us all, um, the, the result is that the acquirers are now looking at their balance sheets and looking to strengthen them. And as Dr. Beard said earlier, you've got sovereign entities that are now needing to unlock additional funds to pay for COVID lockdowns, other socioeconomic uh, subsidies. All of this is resulting in some of the deals that were done in the last couple of years coming back to the table, but also new deals in uh, some of the more dynamic geographies, Asia, Africa, Europe, um, starting, to be, um, uh, starting to be talked about. Um, in fact, when you look at um, the, the type of deals that, we, that we're uh, hearing about, um, everything is on the table. Um, from previous, um, when we looked at previous crises, uh, it became apparent to us that uh, one of the things that, um, uh, that changed was concentration levels. So even assets that you would have thought were unattainable, too strategic, too expensive, are now on the table and ready for a conversation. As Anthony said, if you've got a strong balance sheet, go and ask. Now is the time to have that discussion. And the, the third dynamic that I wanted to share with you, I, I think Johannes spoke about quite eloquently. Um, there's a lot of change that is going to be driven from um, new ways of working, um, new tools, new techniques, um, 
and we need to take full advantage of that. Um, m a needs to be an enabler of this move towards a much more um, innovation-driven segment. So um, commercial excellence, operational excellence is not going to be enough going forward. As uh, you heard already, digitalization, both capabilities and processes and offerings are going to be critical uh, to build a sustainable competitive advantage. Building sophisticated integrated supply chains with possibly embedded uh, autonomous transportation capabilities, again, something that um, uh, may differentiate uh, some of the players in, in our segment, but also being able to secure um, the most appropriate modern infrastructure that will drive efficiency economies of scale um, is something that we're going to have to make sure that, that we blend into our operating models. And being able to deliver this innovation, um, digitalization, supply chain, uh, new infrastructure um, is difficult. Uh, these are skills and assets and capabilities that are difficult to find out there. And um, what we're seeing is that there's a recognition that um, M&A can be an enabler um, and part of the solution for preparing your organization for the future. Um, I promised that I was going to be brief and just hit the key messages. So my summary for you today is so there is a recognition that um, in these changing times with the full impact of COVID and the crisis around us, um, using M&A and deal making as a key enabler for change, having the right experts, driving a more dynamic execution, looking for opportunities in places where we haven't looked for before, and making sure that we are helping with uh, a broader set of business challenges is um, you as leaders or in your respective organizations need to be thinking about, need to be planning for and preparing for. I'll leave it here. Thank you very much for your time.